music, motivation, and positively obnoxious. That's me. It's the Tony Gabbard Show! Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Tony Gebhardt Show. And this is a special edition episode that has been created with artificial intelligence, except for this little intro section. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer here for the episode. And just as a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button on Spotify or YouTube. Super excited to keep episodes coming out. However, today's episode is really special. And I wanted to make sure I got this resource out to you. So without further ado, let's head over to our AI podcast episode, which has been generated by Notebook LM by Google. This is the Tony Gephardt Show. Okay, so let's say you're gearing up to work with someone who's blind or visually impaired, right? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, okay, I want to make sure I really understand the support systems available. Absolutely. Well, you won't believe this. There's a document for that. Really? Yeah, it's called, get this, Blind and low vision contacts. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, maybe not exactly a beach read, but right. think of it more like a treasure map. You know, it points you to all sorts of fantastic resources out there. And honestly, it can be a lifesaver in terms of time. Imagine instead of going down those internet rabbit holes, you have this like organized resource. And often the best part, with direct contact info, like yeah. actual phone numbers, email addresses, and you know, the stuff that really makes a difference. Who has time to dig through websites all day? Right. So I was checking out this document. It's super well organized, by the way. Each state has its own section, very user friendly. Oh, great. But what really struck me was the variety of, we're talking big name organizations, but also like hyper local ones. I'd never even heard of some of these groups. And that's the thing, even though the names might vary state to state, you see a lot of common threads in the kinds of support they're providing. Exactly. Like I kept seeing lighthouse organizations everywhere I looked in this document. And this one caught my eye. California, they've got this place, Enchanted Hills Camp. Hmm. It sounds kind of magical, right? It does. What exactly do these lighthouses do? Okay, so imagine them as these hubs, right, for independent living skills. Okay. So say someone wants to learn how to cook safely, navigate their home more easily. A lighthouse is often that first crucial step. All that makes sense. They often do orientation and mobility training, teach people how to use all kinds of cool assistive technology. It's really about empowering people to live their lives to the fullest. That's fantastic. It's like a bridge to independence, really. Oh, exactly. Now, another thing I noticed copying up everywhere State Departments of Rehabilitation. Seems like those are pretty universal. Absolutely. They are key for anyone looking for employment support. Okay. So we're talking job training, help with finding the right job, even funding sometimes to help someone start their own business. Wow. Yeah. There's this misconception that visual impairment equals limited career choices. Mm -hmm. But Departments of Rehabilitation, they're all about like busting those myths wide open. It's about finding that right fit. Exactly. Right opportunity, regardless of how someone experiences the world. Absolutely. Okay. Now, shifting gears a bit, mm -hmm. we've got to talk about libraries. Oh, yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't love a good library, yeah, right? right. This document lists a whole bunch specifically for people who are visually impaired. And they're such valuable resources. Yeah. We often think audiobooks, which are amazing. Of course. But it goes way beyond that. They've got Braille materials so important for someone learning to read that way or just enjoying literature independently. Right. And then you've got things like descriptive videos, special equipment to magnify text. It's about making information truly accessible. I was just looking at Florida. They've got all these county-specific talking book libraries. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Someone can just, like, pick up the phone or shoot an email, and suddenly this whole world of stories opens up. It's amazing. Yeah, it really highlights how important it is to make sure everyone has equal access, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to things like information and entertainment. Absolutely. But we've only just scratched the surface of this document. Yeah. What other kinds of resources are we finding in here as we dig a little deeper? Well, one thing that's really jumped out at me is the amount of support groups out there. Okay. You know, for someone who's maybe new to vision loss, being able to connect with others who just get it, that can be so huge. Oh, absolutely. Just that sense of, hey, you're not alone in this. Exactly. Which can be so crucial, especially during those times of transition and uncertainty. Totally. And then on top of that, you've got all these amazing advocacy 
organizations out there right fighting the good fight <laughs> you know pushing for things like better accessibility in public spaces education <laughs> employment yeah they're working towards system change which i mean ultimately that benefits everyone right because it's not just about individual support exactly it's about creating a society where everybody can participate fully a hundred percent yeah i'm also seeing a lot of listings for assistive technology providers oh yeah what can you tell us about this this is a big one so we're talking about things like screen readers that can read text aloud, right? Magnification software for computers, even tactile maps to help with navigation. Wow. This kind of technology can really be life-changing. I mean, it allows people to access information, yeah. connect with others, navigate the world with so much more independence. Really opens up a world of possibilities. It's incredible. As we've been talking and going through this document, it's clear that each state kind of has its own way of approaching support for the visually impaired. Right. What are some key things to keep in mind as we're trying to wrap our heads around all this information? I think a big one is remembering that the categories aren't always like super neat and tidy. Okay. An organization listed under support groups might also do job training or connect people with assistive technology. Interesting. It's about looking past those labels and really understanding the full scope of what each organization does. So it's almost like detective work a little bit. A little bit, yeah. You might start with one specific need. Right. But then as you kind of dig deeper and you reach out to different organizations, you uncover this whole network of support that's available. Exactly. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. These organizations are there to help. They're happy to point you in the right direction to the resources that best fit your needs, or in this case, your students' needs. That's such great advice. Mm -hmm. This has been so eye-opening. I feel like I've just barely scratched the surface. You do. Even after spending all this time with this document. And that's the beauty of it. It's like a launching pad, right? It uh -huh. gives you that foundational knowledge, those tools to start exploring yeah. the whole world of resources available to you and to the visually impaired community. So for our listener who's about to start this journey with a visually impaired student, what would you say is like the most important takeaway from our deep dive into this resource. You know, at the end of the day, I think the biggest takeaway is just knowing you're not alone in this. Right. There's a whole network, a safety net of support ready to help navigate this. And this document, it's like, you know, your cheat sheet to that network. It's true. It's about having that information and then turning it into action. Yeah. And what I love about it is that it really lets you be the best possible advocate for your student. Absolutely. You can have these informed conversations with your student, their family, other professionals. You can be the one who says, hey, I know about this great organization or let's get you in touch with this specialist. You know, it's, it's like you become this connector, which is such a vital role. Totally. Now, as we're wrapping up our deep dive here, I'm wondering, is there a question our listener could be asking themselves as they start to explore all these resources, something to get those wheels turning? Oh, that's a good one. I think it's so important to think about how these resources, or even the lack of them, how that actually plays out in someone's life. Like, if transportation is a barrier to getting to a service, that's a big deal, right? Huge. Thinking about those real-world implications, that can really change how you approach support. It's about going beyond just knowing the resource exists on paper. Exactly. And understanding what it really means for people day to day. Yes. And, you know, that kind of leads to a final thought here. Yeah. This document, it's amazing, but it's a snapshot. Things change. Right. Organizations, funding, the needs themselves. So staying connected to the visually impaired community, that's key. Advocacy groups, online forums, just talking to people. That's how you stay up to date, how you stay an effective advocate. Being an active participant, not just a passive observer. 100%. So well said. To our listener, grab that copy of Blind and Low Vision Contacts, see what's out there, and don't be afraid to reach out, connect with others. You're making a real difference, and we're glad to be on this journey with you. Thank you so, so much to the Notebook LM AI generator from Google. If you want to check that out, go to notebooklm.google.com to try that out for yourself. But nevertheless, the copy of Blind and Low Vision Contacts can be found on my website, TonyGetpart.com. Link will be in the show notes. And if you're looking for those resources and are a bit lost 
um, and you know a family member, friend, uh, an acquaintance who is in need of services and just needs to know where to go, all 50 states are covered in this comprehensive document that um, I had put together in 2020. But again, just as another disclosure, please double check the information for some may have been updated and some may have changed. But nevertheless, this is the Tony Gephardt Show, music, motivation, and positively obnoxious. We'll see you guys in the next one.